team season it is right around the corner. We've had a, a really a fabulous camp. I really like how this football team progressed during our uh, camp. And uh, before I get started talking about those guys, I'd like to, to talk about the honor jerseys that we are going to wear this year. Uh, Christian will wear the number one jersey in honor of Indy Kalu, one of our great defensive linemen here. Uh, James Radcliffe will change to 26 and play in honor of Larry Izzo. And Nico Carlson will change his jersey to 78 and play for uh, in the honor of Richard Chapman. Richard Chapman was a 54 grad. Uh, we're excited to honor those three men uh, this season. That's something that our, our team really enjoys, honoring the past and trying to get those former players uh, more involved with us. We also this season will wear an MT uh, on our helmet for Mike Tyler. He was the first uh, African American player at Rice University who passed away uh, last spring. Uh, he last year was also one of our honor jerseys. So uh, uh, you know the team the team wanted to do that. And I'm excited that. Uh, that we're going to honor him again this year by wearing his initials on our helmet. Uh, the camp was really, it was, it was a, it's been a really a smooth transition where you're able to retain most of your coaches. Uh, but Larry Edmondson has really done a, a, a fabulous job of making it a seamless transition. And, uh, you know, it starts offensively with Dreyfus Jackson. Dreyfus is a young man who really, you know, it's rare anymore where you'll find a young man that's willing to, to wait his turn, and he's waited and worked hard for three years waiting for this, this season and for this moment. He has offered us just incredible leadership that transcends this the entire football team. Uh, you know, you watch Dreyfus work. He's a true student of the game. Uh, he spends extra time, and he's in practice early and leaves here late, and he's very confident. I think this team's confident in his abilities. So that's, that's nice as you, you move from the McCard to Dreyfus Jackson, and it gives us a lot of confidence offensively going into the season. Uh, our offensive line and it was very productive. I think Nico Carlson, uh, you know, we returned three starters up there, and uh, those other young men had, had a lot of reps, so we feel good about the offensive line. Our running back coming out of spring, it's, you know, Jawan Davis, Derek Dillard have just had an amazing camp. Our receivers, uh, Dennis Parks, Jordan Taylor, Mario Hull, Zach Wright are guys I think that have, not only do they look forward to catching the ball, I think we've had, the most improvement there has gotten to where we want to block downfield and they understand their role. If we're going to get big plays, how they're going to have to perform every snap. Uh, defensively, you know, I, I really, you look at our linebacker core with James Radcliffe and Alex Lyons, both young men had a lot of snaps last season. Our defensive line, uh, we've got guys, Christian Covington, uh, obviously this back to anchor the interior, Russ Winship played. Defensive ends, Matt Nordstrom will get his first college start, so will Zach Pat uh, at the other defensive end. Secondary, you, it's, you know, that's where the majority of our seniors are, we feel good about the development of our secondary. Um, that's that's been a been a good good group for us. I forgot to mention too, offensive line, Matt Simonette, the young man that injured his arm a year ago against the University of Houston, will get his first college start at the center position. So we're really thrilled, you know, first that Matt could come back from that injury and secondly that he's getting the start. Special teams, uh, you know, you've got James Fairmone back who handled our punting a year ago and, and Tanya Farley who was also um, deep snapped half the season for us. So you feel good about that. James Harrison, the young man that transferred in from LSU, uh, will handle our, our kicking duties and our field goal duties. Uh, but I do, I like the personality of this team. I like the way they work. I like the chemistry that we've seen. We know going into South Bend, you know, what an iconic program we're going to play. You know, talk about you know, Brian Kelly, you look at what that man's done. Uh, you know, I think he's one of the top coaches in the country. He, he's won championships at Grand Valley State, won a national championship there. You know, goes to Central Michigan, wins a conference there, goes to Cincinnati, wins a conference there. And you look at his record at Notre Dame, I think he's one of the finest coaches in the country. Um, Notre Dame's, they're very well coached on the offense and, and defense. You, 
you can tell they're well coached in the special teams, and just from reading their point of emphasis is really trying to get more speed on their special teams. But they're a, they're a big, uh, hard playing football team, and uh, like I said, it's it's a, it's going to be a challenging game, obviously for us. We're going to go into South Bend and absolutely play the best football that we can play. And we're just we're excited. It's just you know when you start camp August third, it's nice to transition to your first press conference of the year where you're talking about who you're about to play. And, uh, it's a great time right now. And Rice football gets the first day of class. You know, so we know today the practice won't be very good because they're a lot of those freshmen are still trying to find out. Even though we tell them every year go find those classes early, we know a lot of them when they're supposed to be here still be looking for that chemistry lab. But it's a, an exciting time for, for this football team and uh, you know we're ready to get this thing kicked off and get it rolling. Coach, how does last year's success kind of give you guys motivation going into this first game this season? Well, you know, I tell you, uh, last year, you know, building a program, it truly is building blocks. And every senior class educates the young, the younger classes under them. And I think we've had tremendous leadership the prior two seasons. And I think we have another senior class this year who's done a fabulous job of setting what our standards are and not accepting uh, like effort that's not up to our standards. So I like the leadership I'm seeing, I think, with the expectations. You know, that's something when we took this program over, you know, we talked about from day one about winning bowl games, winning championships, and it's nice to see that, you know, we've recruited the young men that are great fits here that are athletically capable of doing those, of setting those goals high and achieving them. So the expectations, that's just, you know, we're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, two years ago, I think we were like six, we were six homecoming games, and last year we were none. So I, I know from a perception standpoint, we're making some progress there too. Do you do anything different uh, on a week like when you're facing a Notre Dame with touchdown Jesus and the Golden Dome and all these things that really have nothing to do with the players or the coaches? But do you do anything different with your players to prepare them for an atmosphere like that? You know, no, we, we'll pipe in the music, uh, you know, today to get them ready for that atmosphere, make sure we're prepared in our nonverbal communication <coughs> that we need. Um, you know, they're going to be ready to go. They're excited about when we first saw Notre Dame on the schedule. And it's, you know, more of a, an opportunity for us to see what type of football team we're going to be. Um, this football team, you know, they, you know, everybody's aware of their, the historic program that they are and the, the legendary coaches they've had. And it's, you know, really, it's uh, it's uh, great to open a season against a program like that. And these, when these young men come up, they, they tell you about it. Our goal every year is to be 1-0. and oh, And we're not going to get, you know, we got to respect every opponent. We're going to respect them and we're going to play hard. How would you compare, I guess, the leadership characteristics between Taylor and, and Dreyfus now that he's taken over? You have the same goal, but now you've got a new guy in charge. You know, Dreyfus, Dreyfus will tell you he's not here to win a popularity contest and uh, he's going to challenge the people around him to work as hard as he does and he's not afraid to go tell the offensive line what he thinks about them or what the receivers, good or bad, you know, he, he sets the standard for us and I really appreciated the leadership he has, has shown since the day we got back from Memphis. You know, from that day on, he realized that, that he's the general of this football team. It's a, a role and responsibility he has accepted and has performed very well. Coach, how do you compare the buildup from last year's opener to this year's opener? Obviously, there was tons of hype last year, and this year you've also got a big, big one against Saturday. It's one, you know, really, I think last year, the A&M game, even in the loss, we realized that we had a pretty good football team. You know, these games against Notre Dame, do we want to win them? Absolutely, that's why you play them. But it's also a, a good uh, barometer of where we're going to be in Conference USA, because these games really, is, as important as they are, our goal is to win Conference USA. So we want to make sure we go and perform well, but ultimately when we walk off that football field once it's video, we want to make sure we're a better football team than when we got there. How does this game prepare you to go win your conference? Well, you know what, they're, they're a big, fast, physical football team, and if, you know, you want to be the best, you got to play some of the best. That's just how it is. And, um, you know, Jones, that big defensive tackle for him, I mean, that's a, 
six five six six three hundred twenty pound man. You know he's he's going to challenge our offensive line. Their whole defensive line is early. It, it forces you to rely on fundamentals and your techniques. And if you're going to have any success, you know and you can't abandon those when things get hard. And that's you know they're a, a top fifteen program this year. So they're, they're whole, their entire football teams. You know they're good at every position. Golson's an outstanding quarterback. You know he's going to present some challenges to us where. Uh, you know, last year the quarterback wasn't as mobile. I mean, at times this guy's like when you're playing with 12 people because he may be a drop back pass, but he can hurt you with his feet. I think we're going to see a lot more zone option and some option game that they probably didn't do a year ago. David, they've been in the, the news this offseason well, lately with, with some of the players that are no longer there. Does that change uh, just what you had been preparing for, seen on tape, and now what the, the new personnel they have? No, you know, it can't change. They're going to do what they do. Uh, you know, they have the new defensive coordinator in. We'll see some wrinkles there defensively, but they're going to do what they do regardless of. Uh, I think you'll see some fundamentally changes offensively just because of the athleticism Golson has, but uh, they're a four down defense. I mean, we've studied what they're going to do. They're not going to change just because of those four young men. You talked about the venue and going to Notre Dame, and you talked about how you're going to prepare the players. For you going into a place like that with so much history, where does it kind of rank for you as a venue you've maybe not been, a, been able to coach in yet? You know what, I don't know. You, you know, you when you do this as an assistant coach, and this is my 30th year, and so you, you've played some nice places. I've never been to Notre Dame. You know, the amazing thing, really, once that ball snapped, uh, you, you might you're, could be coaching at Porter Junior High because you just get so locked in on on where you are and what you have to do do next. Everything else really uh, is out of your memory. I'm excited for this football team to go see, um, you know, Notre Dame, to see those facilities, to see, you know, everything you've heard of as a young man growing up. But when the ball snapped, it's, you know, it's over. It's about trying to win a football game. And I think that's one of the reasons, though, we will go everywhere we go. You go on a Friday so they can find the locker, they can see the stadium, they know how to access the, the field, and you try to get some of the, that excitement and anxiety out of them by going over there Friday and having a crisp workout and let them see the sites where they're not so enamored when you show up Saturday. You have the anxiety of not knowing how to get to their, their lockers to get to the field. So we'll get them over there Friday for a good look at everything. Did a couple of personnel deals on, on backup quarterback, get it gone into the last couple of weeks with, with Nate and Tyler. Can you just kind of talk about the decision there? Yeah, it's been a, I mean, those two young men battled it out. Tyler's a little older. You know, Tyler in that last scrimmage really performed well. Um, you know, we expect Nate to continue the battle, but Tyler right now is, came out of that as the number two. As far as Taylor uh, resting him, with the foot, is yeah, we see if he's if he is pain free, he's gonna play. If he's not, you know, then we're gonna hold him. The the back the only bad news out of camp right now truly is Connor Sella. Uh, we we do know he's out four to six weeks. Uh, Jordan, uh, we're just we're gonna be smart with him. You know, it's a long season, and if he's ready to go, he's gonna go. And if he's not, then we won't let him play. But you know, I don't I don't want to compound that and make it worse. But if we need him for a lot of other games. Jordan Taylor's foot's a little slow right now. He hasn't been practicing. Is what Joseph was talking about. Anything else? Which one do you want first, Chuck Bull, Dreyfus? You're up.